Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome back to Plane Time Sopwith Camel Edition. So what we have here is we're getting the Sopwith Camel assembled. This is, um, and I, I have a problem. The problem I have is I think that the angle of incidence of the horizontal stabilizer is off. And, uh, and I'll tell you how I got to that point. Um, and if, feel free to sort of forward through to where we talk about that particular piece. But I, since I've got the plane together like this, I thought, okay, I'm going to talk about the horizontal stabilizer. I might as well talk about some of the other little bits that came together to get to this point because actually it's, it's all coming together really quite nicely. So the first thing that happened was I started to put the wings onto the plane and I needed to make sure that I got the dihedral right here on the wing so that the the wing the, the wing incidence on the here on the the left um, is also exactly the same as the one on the right. Well the way I did that as you can see is I set up this simple little Lego frame um, to to basically balance the wing. So here I have I basically marked everything out, put the Lego down in place and these two pieces here um, were actually mounted so that the plane itself, the, the fuselage, would actually sat in between those two pieces. It doesn't work quite net right now because I've got the cowling and everything else on, but when it was the unassembled frame that worked really well. And then I put these two pieces out here and I measured the height of the, the wingtip as, according to the plan, between uh, seven eighths of an inch and one inch. And I just use one inch to keep it simple. So. Uh, so I, um, I basically lined that up. Now again, that's a little higher now just because of the cowling, but when the base of the plane, the, um, the undercarriage itself, um, or the, the bottom of the fuselage is sitting flush on the table, that lined up with exactly there so that I've got a wingtip um, height of exactly one inch on both sides, which was quite interesting because if I actually push the wings in to get together and push them up against the fuselage where you know, there had been a, an angle built into the edges of the wings, the wings would have been, you know, sticking right up into the air, maybe two inches high, it would have been really extreme. And so uh, it ended up, there's a, there's a little gap there between the wing and the fuselage because of that, but that gives the dihedral according to the plan, which is great. Um, I'm very happy with it, it's very even, it looks very good. So once I put the wings on, the next step was to try and get the struts lined up here so that the upper wing could go on in place and as you can see the struts fit here into the into a slot in the upper wing and into um, two little holes in the in the upper wing in the middle and then a slot on the right hand side and getting those two struts to actually sit so that they pointed in, they were the right amount of distance out of the fuselage and the right height out of the fuselage was a, a royal pain and uh, what I did was I actually built this frame which has the, the holes on it, as you can see, marked out, which are exactly the same place as the holes on here. And I used this frame and I put that frame on top of the plant of the, the struts first and got the struts lined up. And then I did the other thing that I think is really quite fun and um, works great about this model was I put in my bracing wires, except they're not wires, they're carbon fiber rods. And that means that not only do they provide um, like uh, bracing in the sense of they'll stop the, uh, the strut from you know, pulling away um, in, a, in the other direction, but they also provide um, like a stiffness. So, so they actually hold those struts in place vertically, both directions, because of the stiffness of the carbon fiber rod. Those are 0.8 millimeter carbon fiber rods. I'll put, put the link below um, where I got them. I'm very, very happy with them. They work out great. Of course, they're at 0.8 millimeters. They're, they're very light. They're probably as light as um, a piece of elastic or something like that might have been if I was just to build something that looked right but didn't actually do anything. So in the end, I, I built this this frame to put on top of the wing to mount the wing on got it all lined up and perfect and even painted that so that it would look kind of the same color as the wing and then once I got everything together I realized well I actually don't need it 
um, that wing is, is actually very, very stable where exactly where it is and fits in nicely into the top of the struts. Now, if you remember from the previous video, I want this wing to be removable. That's really important. This wing needs to be removable because in here, underneath the wing area here and underneath the top of the fuselage, there's electronics. There's a receiver right under where the pilot is and right under here is probably where I'm going to be putting the uh, a stabilizer uh, because I think I'm probably going to put a stabilizer in there. So, so uh, it's really important to be able to remove this wing if I need to get at things. And if I actually put that little mounting table on there on the top, well, guess what? That would block me from getting in there. And so it actually is, works great that it was a perfect template for making sure that everything lined up and was and worked, but I don't think I'm actually going to use it when I fly the plane. I, I'm going to plan to put uh, these carbon fiber rods again um, here under the wing, right, right there in that gap, and then I'll use elastic bands, and I've got some green elastic bands, so the color's not bad. That will that should hold those in place. That's my plan. This is. Captain Roy Brown, and and for those of you who know the history of the Sopwith Camel, Captain Roy Brown was the Canadian pilot who, for many years, was considered to have been the man who shot down uh, the Baron von Richthof and the Re the Red Baron. Uh, whereas it turned out that it was the Australian Infantry Battalion who who uh, who really shot him down. But um, but uh, regardless, Roy Brown was was a uh, an ace. Uh, I think he had, um, well, he had a large number of kills, um, didn't include the Red Baron, but, uh, but many others, um, and he flew the Sopwith Camel, and so I built this plane with uh, Roy Brown markings, uh, and this is Roy Brown sitting here in the, in the cockpit proudly. I gave him a shave, if you've seen the earlier pictures, he had a moustache, I did some research, uh, Roy Brown never wore a moustache, so so this, uh, the pilot doesn't have a moustache. So what we have now is, um, you know, if you see here, his head sticking up here is just about hitting the wing here. So what I have found from doing some research on places like RC groups is that the pilot that they give you in the camel uh, model is, is actually out of scale. He's too big. He, he's literally like bigger than he should be if he was the correct size for a pilot of this plane and and also should sit further down in the plane. So there's no way his head should be anywhere close to that. But when I first put him in and tried to put the wing on, he hit the wing. I couldn't fit the wing on top. And so what I actually literally had to do um, was was cut the pilot back out of the, the cockpit where I glued him in and then move him down into the plane so that he's just sitting far enough down into the plane that his head doesn't hit the wing. Now I'm not sure I think that maybe I built it wrong. I think he was supposed to sit further down into the plane anyway. Um, it's the, the plans aren't clear but now I go back and look at it I think I can see some hints about um, that I should have maybe read into it that mean he was supposed to be mounted lower. Well the problem I have with that is and, and let's have a look at that here, here's what happens. This wing comes off. Just pops off like that. And that's um, going to be by design. This wing is going to be removable. So um, it pops off and it clips back on and then I'll make it attachable with the rubber bands to hold it on when I'm flying. But the wing pops off. Guess what? Captain Roy Bar Brown pops off too. Um, and uh, Okay, he's not going to pop off unless I pop off the cowling. So let's uh, let's just do that. So the cowling pop clips out, and there we go. So we open that up, and we've got access to everything inside the plane: the receiver, the servos, the wiring. If I need to unplug or plug things, I have an idea that I'm going to replace the servo. That might happen. The wires that go down to the to the motor go down the side here. I have access to everything now and it was just a question of popping that on and then off and I have access to everything which I love that. Now this is the example we might, um, this part might get edited back into earlier when I was talking about this. 
this is how this fits onto the plane. This is that um, mounting template that I used to, to line everything up when I was first building the plane. So that that could go on there, but if I do sort of fix that on permanently, it's actually going to make it very difficult and awkward to get in there. And in reality, I don't really need it. Um, this is actually something you know I figured out as I was going on. I thought, oh yeah, I have a table there, and that gives me something to put the pl the the wing on um, to hold it up. Well, you know, the wing doesn't really need to be held up because when a wing is on a plane. What actually happens as the plane is flying forward, if you think about how planes fly, the wing is pushing upwards. The whole point of a wing is to provide lift. So this wing is lifting up. So having a whole bunch of structure there to prevent the wing from pushing down is not really necessary. That wing sits nicely and loosely on top of the, the framework there when it's you know on the on the runway. But when it's flying, we want to make sure that it doesn't fly off when it's providing lift to the plane, but it actually can lift the plane. So this is where if I put those rods under here and then just use some elastic bands to hold the wing on, that should give me a removable wing that is firmly held in place. It won't move left and right sideways, so I don't have to worry about you know wings, uh, rubber bands crossing over and having multiple rubber bands. And it, but it won't lift up because uh, this will hold it in place. So that's that's my plan around that. Um, so the the last two things I wanted to explain to you about this were um, the first one is the cowling. So I've already partly taken the cowling off, and I'll pop the whole thing off now. And what what you can actually see in here is what I consider a clever design, but based on a clever idea that I got from Cliff Hardy. Uh, in a comment on one of my videos, I think it was the video where I showed that, and he made the suggestion about, well, how can I actually affix it to the plane? So what I did was I cut out this ring of, and this is a, a very thin one millimeter basswood uh, plywood. So I cut that out so that that fits around the motor here, and then I mounted these four magnets in the cowling. These four magnets exactly line up with the screw heads on the firewall. So I actually, instead of having to put extra magnets in the firewall to match that, I just used, well, these are metallic, why not? So actually they, they line up and it works really nicely. Those, those magnets clip on to the screws on the firewall, and by coincidence, they also provide adjustment. If I if I ever need to adjust, you know, the angle at which the cowling goes on to the um, to the front of the plane, I can screw the, a particular screw further in or, or less far in, and it will it will provide you know not a huge amount of adjustment, but just a little bit of fine adjustment to adjust the the angle of incidence of the the, the cowling um, because. You know, I have to make sure that when the propeller's on, that the propeller's going to rotate in such a way where it doesn't hit the cowling on the front here. So I think, I, I, I think I've got it right, but if I haven't, I have a way to adjust it by just adjusting each one of those screws. And I, I really like how that, um, that whole thing works, where this just slides cleanly onto the front of the plane. And of course now I'm, I'm trying to do it for uh, the camera. It's, you have to be a little careful, but um, actually I'll show you this because it's actually quite nice. At the bottom here, I even have the plastic piece that comes with the kit, which is the back end of the, of the cylinders on the motor um, that, uh, that fits in there and actually slides in nicely on the base of the plane. So that actually clicks into place. So I hear you, if you heard it, it was a click. It was a nice little click as that clicks into place. The last thing I want to talk about is, and this was the thing I started the video with, right? So thank, thank you for sticking with me if you stuck all the way through the whole thing. I, I don't know, I think it's interesting. So what we have here is, this is the base, the, the mounting for the tail planes, as, as built based on the plans. I'm pretty sure I have it exactly correct. Um, 
if you look at it though, it doesn't it seem like it's slightly angled up at the back? I mean, it seems like it, but I thought, okay, maybe that's fine once you put all the pieces together. But, um, but here's what happened, is I put the tailplane on like this, and, and now if you look at it, it really does look like it slightly points up. And especially when you compare it to the wings. So here's the wings over here. When you compare it to the wings, and notice the wings themselves, if you can see from the bottom here, the wings actually angle up slightly. Right? They, they're built that way. They're actually, you know, the, the, if you look at the base of the fuselage, right, the, the back of the wing is flush with the base of the fuselage. The front of the wing is hmm, maybe five millimeters higher. So there's a built-in up, upward angle of incidence on the main wing. That's, that's kind of part of the design. But there is no such angle of incidence on the horizontal surface, on the horizontal stabilizer at the back of the plane. In fact, it seems a little bit to me like, I mean, worst case, it's just flat, but maybe it even points down a little bit. So what I, and I, um, you'll, I mean, I'll show you now, uh, a, a picture. I put up a picture. I took a picture and put some lines on it to try and check the uh, the angle of incidence, not just of the bottom wing but the top wing, to make sure they line up. And then to do this, and and you can see, I, I used a protractor and got it out and measured it. That angle of incidence between the difference between the angle of incidence of the horizontal stabilizer and the main wing is around about five degrees. Plus or minus, maybe four degrees, maybe four and a half, five degrees. Now, from everything I've read, um, and so a lot of uh, thank you to the the guys on um, the Guilo's Facebook group in particular, and, and also I followed up with some of the postings on RC groups. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention while I am doing this. Uh, and that is the hinges that I've used. So I, I, I posted this earlier, but I'll just cover this again. So what I have here is, uh, is these are fiberglass hinges that I've used on the underside of the horizontal stabilizer and, and connecting the elevator to, to provide the hinges. The reason why I put it on the underside here is because I've actually run a fiber, carbon fiber rod, a, a tubing actually, it's, a, it's hollow, so it's fairly lightweight, but very um, stiff and stable to provide that, um, that edge for the elevator there. And so I've used that, and therefore I've mounted these on the underside. And these are just pieces of, of little sheets of fiberglass that are uh, hinges you can buy. And again, I'll put the links in the description um, that are just awesome. I've used them on a couple of uh, smaller models that I've built. I, I love how they work. Um, it's very simple to use. Uh, you just uh, CA glue or super glue, um, just a touch. The main trick is to be careful, don't get glue on the actual, um, the bending part. The glue should only go on the part that connects to the wood. So don't get, if you get glue on this part here, then you'll end up with a solid surface and it won't bend and you don't, you don't have a hinge. So that's actually pretty good. It's fairly easy to do. I actually did the same thing. It's less easy to see with the rudder. Um, they're actually the same hinges, um, the two of them just mounted. Uh, it's really, and one of the nice things about these is how easy it is to install them. Um, as opposed to putting in um, nylon hinges with, with actual, you know, metal pins in them um, to try and get them into a piece of wood like this without, uh, without, for example, splitting the wood. This is a simple slice with a knife and then that hinge just slides in, and you can you can you can't even see where it went in there. But um, so I just slid the same the same hinges, right? It just slid an edge of that hinge and slid it inside the wing here. Just a drop of super glue before sliding it in, and then the same thing as just sliced into the back of the rudder there, and then slid the other edge into the rudder not too far so that I actually end up with a with enough throw for a left and right rudder and, and there we go so that's my hinges so the assembly of the plane is is really coming together I think you know apart from having to 
actually fit the stabilizer, horizontal and vertical stabilizer on it with the rudder and elevator and then connect up my um, control rods which I'll, I'll do right away. The only other kind of biggest, biggest structural thing that I have to co cover off with the plane build is to put the landing gear. So the landing gear basically goes in, in here uh, and it's pretty much time to do that. So um, I'll be covering, of course, covering up uh, here and there's really not much to worry about. Um, this here, I, I'm going to make a hatch for that so that I can get in to the bottom of the um, of the servos and some of that wiring. And this can be covered and there's a standard out of the box piece for this. Oh, I probably mentioned this one other little um, thing here while I'm at it. See, the, t the leading edge of the, of the of the wings comes in here and the standard leading edge just it just stops but what I've done is I've just taken a small piece of fiber a carbon fiber it's not rod it's bar um, it's I think it's 1.5 millimeter thick and about three millimeters deep and basically glued that on the back of the leading edges of the, the bottom wing just to provide a little bit more stiffness and strength to the to the um, to the these uh, bottom wings so hopefully I mean a lot of people say build a plane to fly not to crash but I don't know I, I've had my share of crashes already and I, I ideally want this plane to survive the first one as far as possible because I have lots of goals that I want to achieve when I start um, when I do the maiden and then the second test flight and the third test flight and switch out the receiver and put a stabilizer in uh, and so we'll see how far it goes but um, we're going to be trying some interesting things with this plane when we get it in the air. So I've still got some work to do obviously I'm probably still at least a month away from getting it to, to that point but I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you are too. Thanks for joining me. Please like the video if you just like it a little bit. Um, and uh, please subscribe. I'll be posting more. Uh, I'll be getting this plane in the air and uh, And I'll be posting several more videos on the journey to getting to that point. So thanks very much everyone and uh, bye for now